you know, as we transition into showing photos, I'll just share the reading that I actually shared at the kickoff that some of you referenced and some of you have already heard. So after our big announcement in April, followed by heaps of planning, coordination, and dreaming since then, it's hard to believe the tour is upon us. So we had a kickoff, we headed out to West Virginia where we packed up Sweet Lily, and then we headed to New York to savor the Wisdom 2.0 conference, and then we launched our first Tranquility pop-ups in Philly and Brooklyn. So a little backstory, in 1997 I took three months to travel from DC to Alaska, and then down the west coast in an SUV. Camping, sleeping in the car, and savoring an occasional soak in a hotel tub. For the past 15 years, I've been committed to long-term projects such as creating and growing Tranquil Space, plus completing grad school programs and various trainings. But all the while, my wanderlust was tucked in my back pocket, awaiting attention. So despite being tucked away, I'd often tell my boyfriend that my birthday wish would be to travel cross-country in an RV for two weeks. It's funny how I couldn't see past a two-week adventure, but gas and rental costs were always prohibitive, so this dream, too, remained tucked away. After spending six weeks in France last year, with two of the weeks in an RV exploring Provence, I realized that a wait time didn't have to be in two-week spurts, and that my wanderlust wishes were still strong, despite being ignored for so long. Be responsible. Focus on growing and improving. What will happen if you're away for so long? These are just some of the voices in my head ensuring I didn't escape beyond two weeks. It's the American way, after all. The funny thing is I now see how quickly the two months will pass, and did pass. The 11,000-mile schedule was quite tight, considering our extensive route. However, I'm hopeful there will be many more adventures to come in Sweet Lily, and hopefully many more adventures in general. I don't want my legacy to be she worked hard and did the conventional thing, day in, day out. I want it to be something larger involving innovation, charting a new course, and making some sort of meaningful difference. Thus, as you can see, this tour means so much more to me than simply getting out of town for two months. It's a message, a message to my soul that it hasn't been forgotten, a message to blog readers and podcast listeners that I can't wait to meet you, and a message to the world that it keeps turning even if you step off the hamster wheel for a period of time. And it's a message to you that it's good to shake things up from time to time, do something different, unexpected, or irresponsible. So I ask, what sort of conventions do you hold while your soul longs for more? Oh, to ponder, it's worth listening. Feel free, like if you have a question as we're showing photos, to just kind of ask. It's totally casual. Um, so yeah, so we'll begin. Yeah. So this is the logo. <laughs> <laughs> um, we started off here in DC, and some of you may recognize uh, the shot here. This is from uh, our kickoff party at the Darlington House, and that was a lot of fun. Is that Betsy? Um, is that you, Betsy, possibly? in the white shirt yeah, and the me. striped skirt? Yeah. There we go. There we go. This worked out perfectly. Yeah. <laughs> and so, you know, we, we had a lot of fun just even just setting it up. And it was sort of this strange kickoff. And I don't think any of us knew what was about to happen um, because we had just gotten uh, Lily all fashioned out and set up. And, you know, this was sort of the beginning of everything. And that was sort of... Um, Sort of fun. So I don't know what you have any thoughts on how the kickoff party went. Oh, it was so fun. But the funny thing is, is people were like, are you packed? We're like, no. Oh, we weren't. I mean, it was... Not even close. It was crazy because I had just taken a licensing exam, so my study materials were everywhere. You know, we had to pull everything together for the event. And then it's like, oh yeah, we're leaving for two months. And it's not like it wasn't in the back of our head, but we didn't have anything done. So I think we got up at six o'clock the next day and then we left maybe around two Something along those lines. And it was like 98 degrees out. Yeah, it was like yeah. so oh, hot. Oh, so hot. I remember that then. Oh, yeah. I came in. Sam, I'm pretty sure you're wearing the exact same shirt. That you Probably. Wore <laughs> oh, definitely <laughs> that. Probably. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was. Getting all sweaty. Oh, yeah. that was the worst. Yeah, it was But, you tough, know, hey, it was great. Tough departure. <laughs> yeah. It wasn't so, the easiest thing. We got it all done, though, which was amazing. Yeah. And so we drove up to uh, Jersey City, New Jersey. 
And uh, there is a campground in Jersey City, New Jersey. P.S. And yeah. it's, if, if you ever want to not, you know, stay in a hotel in the New York area, it's like, what was it, 80 bucks a night? It's, bucks it's outrageously night. expensive for a campground. Very, the most expensive campground well, we have. Where in the metro area are you going to stay overnight for 80 bucks? Boom, and you, you see the Statue of Liberty. Like, it's very close. And yeah. the metro was right there. Or subway. And I had a picture there. also. We came in on 9-11. So it was the anniversary. So they had the two beams of light going up. It was really a striking place to be. And Jersey City, I think we sort of ended up liking it. I love Jersey City. Anyone here from Jersey? The swaggers and the accents and the... I just loved it. I kind of was crushing on Jersey. She loved Bergen County. I'm just saying. Oh, my gosh. Where are you from? I'm from Passaic County, but my sister lives in Bergen County. There you go. Okay. It was great. Yeah, because our tow truck driver, which... We'll We'll get to in a second. But yeah, (laughs) he was like, I've never seen a swagger like that. It was amazing. It was was pretty cool. Well, we'll get to him in a second because I have a picture of him. So we went to Philadelphia as our first event. So in New York, we had a, a, an event that we went to. Um, we got to see the Google headquarters. That was really cool. But then we went to Philadelphia, and that was our kickoff. And we parked literally right next to the building, and you can see this beautiful mural that was next to it. And this was one of the first pictures I took on the road that uh, I really just spoke to me when I took this because it just felt like it was everything about what the tour was. There was so much beauty in it and uh, I was really excited that at this moment right here when I took this shot I was excited for what was to come little did I know what was going to come that night <laughs> uh, so this is Kimberly I, I, we don't have a lot of pictures of the events but this is just an uh, idea you know it's sort of the same stuff that we have set out tonight but uh, yeah and so Philly was really fun it was, was a great fun. way to kick off the tour and it's a cool little building and you know we got to see things like this you know classic it was right in center city philadelphia so if you haven't been to philly it's a really cool city i really it's like so that. cute yeah but yeah a lot of these cities sadly we were in and out of for the events because you know she's a little challenging to park and so into maneuver streets and what have you it's not like it's super hard but it wasn't super easy i think that was the hardest place because philly was because the building was center city philadelphia is like these weird angular streets and then they were doing road work and then we were going around in circles and eventually we found the spot but it ended up working out but I think that was actually the hardest and I was dreading like some other cities that came out but actually that ended up being the hardest so but it wasn't so bad after all so we promptly left after the event and then this thing you are now looking at a serpentine belt I know I know seriously Tim you're putting up serpentine belt this thing broke on the way back from Philadelphia to New York and that belt powers everything in your vehicle everything and we were four miles away from the campground that i showed you before thank goodness and so when your your serpentine belt goes you have the clock starts ticking basically until your engine a overheats and then eventually just blows up for lack of a better way of putting it but we made it we made it and then you know we ended up uh leaving we got so there, there she is sort of dead in the water and in, in the uh you notice how you're supposed to back in like the guy next to us no 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 we didn't back in we just sort of like we made it turn off the engine um and then we we're like okay well we're just going to figure this out because we had a brooklyn event the next day and so uh you can see i don't know if you can, actually maybe i can zoom in here a little bit you can see the behind cart. kimberly's bike you could see this cart that's hooked up to my bike there so I, this is like 50 pounds worth of stuff. Books, art supplies. And we're all into freaking Because we, we had, we, we weren't even going, we weren't going to drive anyways into no. Brooklyn. Because we were in Jersey, you had, it, it just, it would have been really, it would have been hard. So we had the bright idea of taking uh, uh, the path to, to the New York City subway and we got in and it was fine. Except this little contraption was how we got from the campground to the Jersey City path. And it worked. It did. It worked. It worked. <laughs> I thought it was kind of cool. He looked a little silly, but it was very cool. <sighs> Here's lovely Brooklyn. You you should talk more. I'm talking. Oh no, you're you're good. You oh keep okay. Going. I you're was going to say this is your podcast. Oh by the way, happy three hundred. Oh yeah, happy three hundredth episode. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And okay, oh, so the next swagger. day. The next day, was his name Joe? I don't remember his name. I loved him, though. Yeah. Let's call him Joe. Joe. We'll, we'll say it's Joe. He, he came was in. speaking some language. You said it was Spanish. I was like, I haven't heard Spanish like that. <laughs> well, he was speaking Spanish to... With a Jersey accent, I guess. Well, <laughs> that might have been part of it. So it's Amazing. Um, this is the picture of Lily getting uh, towed, basically. And uh, we went uh, a few towns down south and... 
they said they had the part, they had the part, and then it, they didn't have the part. And so we got to spend a night in the Red Roof Inn. And that's where the first time I said, all this could be yours. And uh, what else did I say about it? <laughs> we were like, hashtag tranquility tour. Yeah. Because yeah. we're like walking along the highway to get dinner. We're <laughs> like, this is at, like, so a, sad. Uh, <laughs> by a Walgreens. I think we have dinner at Walgreens. It was awesome. <laughs> I think we did. And I had to buy a candle for the Red Roof Inn because I was like, this is just intolerable. <laughs> Yeah, it, it wasn't great. But but eventually that all ended and we got to say goodbye to New Jersey after a, a full week. And that was the only time, that was the longest we stayed in one place for the entire two months. And, and it was all by accident. And it was mostly by accident. But because we ended up staying there, I think, two or three extra days yeah. as a result. But eventually we got on the road and we ended up going to uh, Quebec because we had an event in Montreal. And this was a, a little farm across the street from our friend's mom's place. And so there was this little burrow there and you can see Louie got to meet him and everything. He was very excited about all that. But most importantly, we got to have poutine. Does everybody know what poutine is? Yes. Has anyone not had poutine? I'm not. Oh my God. Do I have a picture? <laughs> oh this yes. This is poutine. <laughs> it is so amazing. So this is in Hudson, Quebec, which is just this cute little town that our friends uh, uh, are from originally. Yeah. And so we, we, that's where we parked Lily rather than taking it onto the island of Montreal, which would have been a complete disaster. Um, so, yeah, but as a result, we got to go to all these different poutine places because I told Jason, our, our friend, that I really liked it. And so now every time we go up there, he's just like, well, we got to go to this place and we got to go to that place. So, yeah, we, we did a good job taking care of and this. And they do. Like, they have vegan. They have, like, I don't know if it's, like, healthy, but with, like, veggies. Mm-hmm. They have, like... All these different kinds, but it is I mean, not like, technically a healthy dish. Yeah, I don't know that there's it's French any fries, healthy. gravy, and cheese curds. It's delicious. It's the greatest. Yeah, look at that. It looks disgusting, but it's like the most amazing. I want to find delicacy. Yeah, I know. I know. Right. Oh, that's right. I heard about that. Yeah, I'll have to. Oh, I'll have to wow. check out Church Key for that. Yeah, delicious. So that was like three days worth of meals right there. Yeah, but they, like the people we stay with, they'd be like, "What do you want to eat breakfast?" Putin. You yeah. know, it was like constant. It was pretty great. It was very. So good. that was uh, that was sort of like the, the the culinary delight of those days. And then when we went back into Canada, I had to keep finding it, even though it's mostly a Quebec thing. But when we, we later on down the road, when we came into Alberta, I'm like, yeah, I'll look for a Putin. First place we go to had it, so of course I got it. But it wasn't the same. Alberta's nice, but they don't do poutine right. Mm-mm. So after uh, Montreal, we came back down into New York State, and we uh, we went into Ontario very briefly, and then down um, the edge of Lake Ontario. And this is uh, at my parents' place, uh, right near Rochester, New York. This is Webster, New York, and this is the beautiful view that first morning that we were out there. Not too bad. Not too bad at all. And then that's very close to Watkins Glen, New York. Where Carol was. Carol joined us. We slapped the Tranquility Tour sticker because we we had to get that shipped off to, to... I think I had to have it sent to them or something well, like that. I think Marlies had to send it. I think it That's came here it after was. we left or something and then it had to... Yeah. So we slapped that, that, that sticker on the back and so everybody knew to go to TranquilityTour.com. Dozens of people came to that <laughs> website after that. Dozens. <laughs> So then we came to the Farm Sanctuary. Sanctuary. And it's about an hour and a half away from uh, where I grew up. And it's this gorgeous little uh, area of New York State. Have you been, Susan? I haven't been. It's It's the Finger Lakes region in New York. It's it's, it's really... For those of for those who think that New York City is the only thing in New York State, there's like all this other stuff upstate, and uh, this is one of the wonderful things. Great wine country and things like that. And farm sanctuary. So we got to see goats... (laughs) <laughs> and we got to see pigs. pigs. And we set up the little uh, kind of the book nook and we did a little thing in their barn area. I don't even yeah, know what you call it. Yeah, well, that. it's kind of like their education center. Yeah. Yeah. It was really cool. And uh, they, they set things up really nicely for us. So that was that was Farm Sanctuary. Yes. And Carol was there. And it was yes. so fun. And we got to meet new animals, too, didn't we? Yeah. Who did we meet that was new there? Um, well, we met the, um, I'm trying to think. The special needs cows. The special needs cows, because that's mainly the cows that we met. And then we got to meet the pigs that were, that we could meet, that were sociable. Right, the goats. The goats. The turkeys. The turkeys. They were yeah. molting too, I think. Yeah. I remember that. Yeah. And that cat it was a little, like, really funny. Little oh, they kept cat. following us around, right? But I don't we got any names like really no names of the pet the animals are coming to oh, me no, she said them. yeah that was dewey dewey that's right it was dewey 
the cat everywhere we'd go like there was the cat like on a post like he was like so cute hello welcome to my farm <laughs> totally <laughs> so then we drove to Pittsburgh and uh this, the reason why I have this is this this uh, event we did in this cool grocery store. Yeah. And it was like this community room, like sort of like how Whole Foods here in D.C. has like an upstairs area where you can eat, except this was a private room and we got to do this cool event there. And, you know, we got to say, wave down at Lily down in the parking lot. And, uh, look at her. See, she's not that big. Like if you look at her compared to cars, I mean, she's big, but you should see the RVs that like, oh, you man. know, we were in campgrounds. They, they were, were like monsters. three times our size. Yeah. With like so, living rooms and stuff like that it was pretty crazy and we're in this little dinky little thing and we're like we don't want any bigger thank you but it's great because you can see how she just fits like right into a yeah. parking spot even with the bikes on the back mm-hmm. so so that was Pittsburgh and then this was one of my favorite places yeah. that we went to uh, we 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 had to get. We were, our next event was in Peoria, and I had a friend who li- ha- I have a friend who lives in Chicago, and so we wanted to go to some place that was kind of cool. That was because we hadn't been to any like real campground campground. So we went. We found Indiana Dunes National Park, and uh, there was a campground right across the street from a train station that goes right into the city of Chicago. So here we are, walking distance to Lake Michigan. And walking distance to this train station, it was all right there. And we had this fun little time. My friend came down, and uh, it was this cool little train at Beverly Shores Station. And the cool part was that you got to you, it, when she had to go back. We, she got the last train back that night, and they didn't, it didn't just stop. You had to hail it, so you had to like flick a light on or something, like in the strobe so light would go. Off. It was like hailing a taxi. It was the. I think we talked about this in the. Podcast. I just have to show these succulents are from Patricia and the candle. Yes, that's, and they traveled with us the whole they time. Did. That's right. I forgot about yeah, that. The Thank whole you for, time. Yeah. They did not look like this no, at the end of the trip. I didn't. I don't recognize them because they didn't look like that for much longer. And the candle we went through completely, and I now use it for tea lights. Yeah. So very cute. Yeah. Thank you. And this was really cool, as oh. Art Deco, and then and it, it was very art deco look but then of course the the real thing was the dunes and, and lake michigan and you know if you've never been to one of the great lakes i used i, I grew up on one you know, it was just a real treat to see this part of the country and uh this was louis's first beach of many because he we discovered he's a beach dog big time big time so and this was one of my, this might be one of the, my favorite pictures i've ever taken of kimberly and louis it's, it's cool. just so beautiful the yeah. blue and yeah it was really it was really pretty so indiana dunes national has anyone Lakeshore. been Oh, Highly recommend it. Yeah, really nice. Then we went to Peoria, and we were supposed to have our host. She was supposed to be able to make it, but tonight because she's in town, but she wasn't able to, unfortunately, because we could thank her again for this amazing. She did this crazy setup. Can you stand? It was the most people that we had of any of the events. And she just did this huge layout. And so since it was close to Halloween or within a few weeks of Halloween, she did these glitter pumpkins with pigs on them. So she got the pumpkins, amazing. painted them, I think white or a light pink. And then while it was still wet, put glitter on them. And then hot glued little pigs and the little pink flowers. I mean, and then everybody got one when they left. She gave us a big one and then three little ones that I took to all our events after that. But I mean, that's insanely dark. I mean, this was like... Over the top. It was, I loved it. Everybody loved it. everybody at all the events did something cool and different, yes. but this was this was pretty special. So yeah. The glitter pumpkin pig. I mean, come on. Like, you know. Yeah. So then Kansas City, you know, you'll notice we're just like sort of hopping across right here. And uh, this was really cool. This was a was this our first yoga studio that we yeah, were well, at? Oh no, we, in Montreal we're at a Montreal, studio. you're right, of course, at Jen's place. Um, but yeah, this was this was the, our first time your first time in Kansas City, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So we got a got a chance to visit there. And this was the one of the few days that it actually rained. I mean two whole months, and I think I can count on one hand the number of days it rained on us. And uh, this was and, and the best part was it was it was after. It was fine, no problem. But look at this, they we pull up, we're kind of obvious, right? And like <laughs> we pull up. They come running out with this bag, which what you may not be able to see is that's Louis's photo on the bag with like all this like stuff, and it's full of like grain free dog treats for him. <laughs> I mean, so thoughtful. So that's why he's uh, holding up by it. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh, look at that! And look like damask in the background. I mean, like the cutest bag ever. I saved that bag. I, we still have that. It's so cute. cute. He has consumed the treats. Yeah, they are all gone. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, Kansas City. Yes, thank you. Um, and then they, of course, it, you'll notice the theme of these events. There was lots of pink. 
And so <laughs> Pink Lemonade, of course, was there. So it was, it was a, they did a really nice job there. Um, when we left there, this was one of the first nights that we decided that we were going to stay. I think we'd stayed in another one before, but we stayed in a lot of rest stops. And I, you know, I used to think that, you know, you weren't allowed to stay overnight. Actually, that's, it's more unusual that you're not allowed to stay overnight with a little camper. And so this one actually had a little sign that says, you can only stay here one day. And we're like, (laughs) that's cool. Cause it was, (laughs) thank you, Kansas. But that was the middle of nowhere. We we took these, uh, they call them blue highways, the the sort of state or, or local roads that you can take. And um, we got to take along the extreme northern road, the, this, this uh, line that you see here. This was the highway that we were on. We got, it was just so beautiful. Mm-hmm. Kansas is a really beautiful state. People, people, you know, often say, oh, I had to drive across Kansas. Well, if you're on the freeway, it's not as interesting. But on some of these highways, it's a really beautiful state. Very rolling hills, all the farmland. It was really cool. I really It's just it. like the W, Allison. <laughs> just like the W. Rest us. And there would even be mornings where we're like, we really wanted tea. So we'd be going around with our tea kettle like trying to find an outlet like in the bathroom or someplace to heat up our hot water just like the w honey just like (laughs) but it was great and it was a it was a good way to take advantage of the fact that we were in a camper and it was kind of cool and you know we would would shower later yeah maybe sometimes much later (laughs) i'm looking at you (laughs) okay yeah wyoming was so fun beautiful we have to spend a couple of days there and uh, Jackson, if you haven't been to Jackson, it's just one of the great, great places in the country. And uh, so we pretty much made a beeline straight to there from once we crossed into Wyoming. It was so freaking windy. Mm-hmm. And you'll hear me see that again. But it was so freaking windy in Wyoming. It was crazy. The OG. Kimberly has this thing with Look, I'm element. kissing the sign. Yeah, we're going to have to we're gonna zoom in on that. Hold on here. There we go. Kimberly kissing the Olive Garden sign. Um, Kimberly really likes the Olive Garden. That was not the first one that we went to. It wasn't the last one that we went to. But we went we went to the Olive Garden quite, quite frequently. She really likes the Olive Garden. And um, I... I did say no at least once. Yeah. I did get my way once. Um, we had some of the just beautiful campgrounds that we were at, you know, this was just some KOA or, or mm-hmm. well, what's the other one? It wasn't a KOA. It was the, oh, the one that Good we, Sam. Good, good Samaritan, Good Sam is what they call it. You know, in, the, in just these pretty little places, they're just like these big places where people go and park, but every once in a while you can find an angle and just be like, oh yeah, this is kind of cool. It, we were we stayed in much more picturesque places later, but you know, every once in a while we chased fall across the country and back. I mean, we had probably the longest fall, I think, ever just because we kept, we just managed it by happenstance to hit the foliage in all these different places. It was really great. Hey Tim, does Lily have like um, a little bathroom? Did you have electricity? Did you hook up to like yeah, yeah. Um, there's there, there's a bunch of different ways that you can do it. There are batteries on board, but um, so so when we would stay at places where we weren't plugged in, we could run lights and things like that. But when it was, um, we had the ability to plug in, and we could plug in at people's homes. And you know, we, st- we we stayed in a bunch of places where you could just plug into an outlet. I've got a little converter for that. But for the most part, it's one of those bigger ones, sort of like the size of when you plug your your dryer, your electric dryer in. It's that kind of a plug in, and most. Um, campgrounds have that then you can also hook in with a hose a standard size hose they call it city water i don't know why they call it city water but that's it it bypasses your tank you can also carry a tank full of water so there's all sorts of different ways that you can do it and uh we we took advantage of it it was pretty great yeah so we had a loo even has a shower but we never used the shower didn't use the shower didn't need to because most of the campgrounds had separate showers that were actually kind of nice in most instances yeah um, we could have actually. I think I used it once at the beach to wash my feet. You rinsed off your feet, yeah. But we yeah. never like bath, you know, like not full. Kimberly on. was like, "Your feet stink," and I said, <laughs> "I'm gonna go wash my feet." I think actually that was it. I think it was it. <laughs> That's kind of funny. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it'd be great because like I need to use the loo, and he's like driving down the highway. I just go. Oh and yeah, it was like awesome. I was like, I think every car should have like a toilet in the back and a bed for a nap. It was awesome. We never had to make a stop, a bathroom stop because Ever. of Kimberly. <laughs> so never. Great. I had to. Huh? I because I, I drove all one eleven thousand five hundred. The whole thing, whatever it was, 11, 000, 11, 525 miles. I yeah, drove he every drove mile every there. last bit. I've never driven Miss Lily. You have? You've never? No. Even, oh wow, that's crazy. We're gonna have to change that. I know. So, well, I was stopped in this. Wyoming was just kind of cool. I just like, love this town, Rawlings, which was uh, 
we, we got sandwiches or something there. Oh, and, right. Yeah, and it was just this cute little town, and that you know this little metal cutout sign with the horse. It was one of the first kind of signs that I felt like, okay, we're out west now. You know, you could kind of get that feeling. Have you guys really been cool. to Wyoming? It's like so it's such a cowboy country mm-hmm. and. Ranches. Yeah, yeah, ranches. Really beautiful. It was really though. pretty, and there were deer running about on the streets in there. It was, oh yeah, they yeah. were like yeah, it was pretty crazy. Then we ended up in Utah, and we spent a lot of time in Utah. We sort of it, 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 the route that we took. We we ended up going north from there. We, we were in Salt Lake for an event, but you know we ended up going north and then back south again. And so we ended up touching Utah in a lot of different places, and then we actually ended up crossing back in again from the south later on in the trip. So Utah was this was sort of this thing that we were doing this big lap around throughout our, our route. And it's a great place to do that because it's one of the most beautiful places out there at all. Um, this was our view that we got to wake up one morning in, ta-da, a rest stop after <laughs> our uh, Salt Lake experience, which was just fantastic. And we had a really good time there. Yeah, it's great because you pull in and it's like dark, so you have no idea where you are and then you wake up and it's like great. It's to- Yeah, exactly. Rattlesnake. Yeah, this was the first sign that we were in dangerous parts of the West, like the desert. It says, caution, rattlesnakes have been spotted in this area. Please use care when walking. It's like, okay, thanks. Thanks. And then there's like a dead bug on the sign. I don't know. <laughs> just, just, just to like drive the point home. You know? It's like, this bug almost got it too. So, and then uh, I wanted to put this in. Uh, this was our host in uh, um, Salt Lake and she gave Kimberly a pillow that she did she sew this herself? No, she did. She found it. But she it found looks it. Like it, it looks it it's really kind of homespun and so cool. Cute. And it's got the little heart on the door, it's a little camper pillow, and that's proudly in Lily right now. So that'll so cute. that'll travel with us probably from now on with, with the camper. And she's former formerly from the DC area. She's a social worker and um she worked at a home that we did a lot of work with, with Tranquil Space Foundation. So we worked with her girls a lot. Yeah. And so it's great. Now she's out in Salt Lake doing the same thing. And we got then then uh, let's see. So more. Let's see. I think I might have done this a little out of order. This looks like Jackson. No, doesn't it's it? Jackson. Okay. Yeah. So, anyways, back. Pretend that pretend that Utah didn't happen yet. I did this out of order. This is Jackson. It's like, oh look, there's snow it's in the air. Oh, snow. that's nice. And then we tried to drive up into some of the national parks, and then the next day kind of got really, 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 really snowy, and we had to turn around and come back. And oh darn, we had to spend a second night in Jackson. Oh yeah. well, it wasn't too bad. All right, so here's Grand Teton. I guess we're going to have to talk a little bit about the government shutdown. <laughs> so, so you know, sad. I pay attention to politics, and I'm sort of like sitting there going, oh, so this shutdown's probably going to happen. And then I remembered back to the last time that happened and all the pictures of shutdown national parks, and I was thinking, oh, yeah, we were going to go to Grand Teton, Yellowstone, and Glacier, and that was going to be a really awesome part of our trip. And we sort of timed the events so that we could spend a whole week in these three places. No, no. But you can still see it, right? They couldn't so, stop that. I was so. going to say, so the, the, the nice thing is that on the U.S. highways that were along the border of them, no problem. You could see this. We just couldn't go and take advantage of the interior of the parks. We couldn't see Jenny Lake, which is just this amazing place in Grand Teton. So we didn't get to do that, but we did at least get to see that. This was right before the snowstorm came, by the way, that forced us to turn around because we were going on a road up to... Uh, 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 Yellowstone and the road didn't exist and then things got crazy and we had to turn around and we made it. And we ended up back in this cowboy bar in, in, uh, uh, uh that had Wi Fi and a fireplace. It was basically, oh, and the Bills game. So it was sort of like, <laughs> I'm watching football, enjoying the heck out of it. And, uh, Kimberly got to have Wi Fi and a fireplace and it was just the greatest thing ever, except they didn't serve food and there was this whole thing with the food. But anyways, yeah, but it was fun. It was really cool. And this was the next morning. This is, uh, the snow that we had there in Jackson. And it was, it was our first time when it was really cold and we knew it was going to be cold in a few parts, but we got some really cold nights. We got some like, you know, down into the teens kind of nights. So that's when it was good that we had a little heater inside and we were able, we were really comfortable despite that. And, um, you know, we know what the limits are sort of, but once it starts to get below freezing, Things start to water lines and things like that get to freeze. That's sort of the enemy of RVs. That's why you don't see lots of people RVing through the winter, you know? These are things you learn, right? So, okay, now pretend I didn't make a mistake and forget my geography lessons. So here we are in Montana. And this was, uh, we went north in there and crossed over the Continental Divide. This was not the highest point that we got to. We did get a little bit higher. That's going to come later on. But Montana was amazing, and we got to stay at Jellystone Park. <laughs> Have you guys ever stayed at a Jellystone? Do you know about it? Yeah. 
Yeah. It, it's all like themed Yogi Bear and stuff, and like you know, all the, the, the each of the the parking spot, like the streets they they have they name they always name the streets in these places. Yogi Lane. Yeah, Yogi yeah. Lane and the Boo Boo Lane and yeah. stuff like that. It was pretty funny. Yeah, yeah. So that was Jellystone. No Yellowstone, <laughs> but we got Jellystone. Yeah. <laughs> and that was the first day that we got to use the bikes, and uh, we went from uh, uh, the spot. Where we had the uh, campground all the way down to I Perkins. Think, Perkins, yeah. Do you guys know Perkins? It's like a Denny's, but I think yes. it's from your neck of the woods. It's like the. This was in Kalispell, uh, Montana, which was a very cool town, right, very close to Glacier National Park. So there we go, and I got to have fire and beer. <laughs> this was about when I was like, "Yeah, this is all right. This will do." I think that was our first uh, real campfire. That was that our first. Night. It was so lovely. Yeah. It was good, and we had more, but this was this was the picturesque one, and and I got to have beer. Um, this was on the way, so Glacier was closed as as we talked about, but um, this was just one of the views that we were able to get. And it, if you haven't used, if you've got an iPhone and you haven't used the panorama thing, man, this was the type of trip for it. We got to do a bunch of them. That's why we got some really cool shots like this. And so we're entering Glacier because you're, if it was a U.S. highway, it was still open. So we were able to go through it to a certain extent. And we took this crazy back road that was still open. And we saw some amazing, amazing stuff, including horses in the middle of the freaking road. I don't think we talked about this on the podcast. No. Uh, but yeah, we, we, we sat there. You can see the other car behind the horses there. Like both we're of all us like, are, what do we do? Yeah, we're all just sort of sitting there waiting and, you know, just waiting for the horses to go because we didn't want to hit them or anything. But yeah, it, it was really pretty. But then you got to see shots like this. So. And so as awesome as this was, it was still a little bittersweet because we couldn't go in, you know, it was still, we were on the, we were on the outside, but this is what Glacier National Park looks like. And this is your favorite, right? Yeah. That's my yeah. favorite. Have you guys, anyone been to Glacier in here? It's unbelievable. Yeah. So once the one thing that we knew that was on the other side of the border, not just Putin, mind you, but open national parks. So Yay, Canada connected to Glacier National Park across the border is Waterton, something national park waterton something waterton something waterton something national park uh, per, uh, yeah national park because it's not provincial but alberta okay remember how i said wyoming had the strongest winds we had alberta made that look like a gentle breeze and so it literally tore apart the top <laughs> of our air conditioning duct because kimberly said wait why are all the people back there i want to be right on the water look how pretty this is and it was very pretty However, the crazy <laughs> winds that came. I thought we were, it was like, I mean, it was insane. Like, we're shaking. It was crazy. It was like a hurricane. It was like a hurricane. It was insane. <laughs> it was really insane. Coming right off this lake, this I'm devil like, lake. Was there you know? anyone else right by the lake? And we listened to our ghost story because we were listening to these, like, old-timey radio podcasts. So we're listening to that, and then we're... Settling in, and we're kind of like shaking, and it just got worse and worse. And I hear rattling on top and wrenching sounds. It was just sort of like, <laughs> ugh, it was crazy. So yeah, that was that was Waterton Waterton Lakes National Park. That's yeah. what it was. Very pretty, really Very pretty. pretty. And this was Louis. This was one of our colder nights. <clears throat> so Louis had to uh, bundle up a little bit. So he's got his Syracuse sweater, and he was underneath his little fleece. Yes, go, go orange, right? <laughs> Louis says go orange as well. And uh, that was right before we ended up going to uh, Calgary, which was awesome. I'd never been to Calgary, and we were at this really cool restaurant and this nice setup there. Beautiful. And Calgary's right on the Bow River. It was just a really pretty, cool city. I'd, I've never been there. I really liked it. And then we went to Banff. Banff and Lake Louise. Anyone been there? So we Julia. sort of, Isn't we sort of rejuggled things, and we were able to... End up spending a couple of the extra days there, which was great. So the cool part is that um, it was – there's a lot of bears there. We talked about this on the podcast. But the next campground over was for tents and things like that. Like they call them soft-sided, so like not in a vehicle or a camper. And it had electric fencing all around it to keep the bears out. <laughs> So they don't eat you while you're sleeping. Right. Kimberly was a little afraid of bears so much so she bought bear spray. And I was like so that. scared. It was really pretty. And I mean, you just this picture. There, this picture is not even ten percent of how 
blue that lake was and how amazing it, it really was. And it, it, but it, it gives a little bit and just how I mean that perfect reflection of the mountains off of it. It was it was an amazing place, and I was really happy that we got to spend some time there and walk around. And Louis Louis even liked it, I think, even though it was pretty cold. I had my bear spray with me. Yeah, she was packing bear spray. In I even picture. took it into the hotel. I'm like, you just never know. Yes, this fancy five star like W style like makes the W look like nothing else. And and like yeah, we had lunch there, and I'm like, gotta be safe. Yeah, <laughs> safety first. <laughs> I'm shocked we did not get arrested by a Mountie at some point on this trip. So, so Louie got a chance to go down to these these waters. Was there any reason why the water was so blue? I thought it was like yeah, we copper. looked it up. You thought it was copper, but I think we read that it was something, something else, else. But I yeah. can't remember. Yeah, gorgeous, really. Gorgeous. But we we did learn at one point. Yeah. But yeah, it's crazy. It's like turquoise. Yeah, it was like a, a tropical look, and you're, it was not tropical. No, I'm sure anything you. but. So. So uh, this was in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. So we came back down, went through British Columbia, and then down. Um, and this was just this this tree, this like gorgeous red and orange tree that Kimberly was, I think, tapping out a few emails. I got a picture of her with Lily. I just thought that was such a gorgeous, you know, fall, like in a nutshell there. And, and we did laundry there on a Saturday night. We're like... There was a little girl Saturday testing night. out her... Uh, her, her, her costume. Halloween costume. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm like, rawr. Yeah, we don't have candy. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. It was like some really scary mask, too, and you're like alone in the laundry room. You know, it was just kind of creepy. It was. Uh, <laughs> I didn't get a chance to get a picture of uh, the source waters of the Columbia River, but way back a million years ago, I did work on, on, uh, Colum- on the Columbia River. And so uh, it's one of the most majestic rivers in not just North America, but the world. And this was one of the wider points and you just see how much water basically if rain falls in the northwest it ends up in that river and then eventually ends up out in the pacific it was just a gorgeous gorgeous place and it was kind of fun to sort of see the source waters in british columbia originally and then see it as we kind of went down and eventually ended up in portland so uh, but first we went to seattle and it was foggy and you know it was just it was you know i was expecting rain because you know once it's past about mid-october or so you should expect rain every day no it was sunny and gorgeous, except for the early morning fog. Yeah, just the fog. Yeah, and so we uh, got to see some uh, some of my family in Seattle. We had a great event in Seattle, and uh, that was a lot of fun. And then somewhere along the way, we realized that the wheels on on our, our camper were starting to give us some trouble because we were shaking a lot. We're shaking a that lot. Was our first over clue. fifty miles per hour. And um, in Seattle, I learned two things. Number one. You should check your oil more regularly than we did because we were almost out. So that was a problem. So then we got more oil and that was good and we kept on that. But also we had to get new tires. So this is Lily getting new tires in, in Portland from the very famous Les Schwab tires. It's famous if you've heard of it, but you know, it's a big, big tire store in Portland. So yeah, so new tires and uh, then she then she got these cool new rims with it as well. <laughs> they were like so, so stylish. shiny. Tim's like the only thing they don't do is move backwards. Yeah, <laughs> they were, they were, they were, I, I wanted they were some spinning spinning spinning. rims, but you know they, but they, totally they didn't have them like in an RV. It was know? almost a little embarrassing because they just didn't go with the whole like vintage. Well, they were super shiny, too. so shiny. But after a few thousand miles, like yeah, they they're not quite as shiny anymore. Anyway. We also got a chance in Portland to do uh, some wine tasting. The cool thing about Port- Portland, don't get me started. Started on Portland. It's one of my. I used to live there for five years, but um, it, it's got so many things inside the city. And this is an urban winery. Like this guy's literally making wine inside the city of Portland. You know, you normally have to go out to the country for this kind of stuff, but he gets scrapes shipped in there. And so we got to do this cool wine tasting. I think this was Pinot Noir that he was doing, and it was in various stages. So it was it was really fun and cool, and uh, just some of the different things that you can do in a city like that. And um, I, it's funny because I feel like DC has been doing a lot more. Th- we're mm-hmm. seeing a lot of things that that DC sort of adopting. It's feeling it's feeling like we're getting some more of that kind of stuff. So I'm excited about that. But that was a lot of fun, and I get to visit family in Portland as well. We and, and you too. And what else, what do you want to say about Seattle or Portland? I don't think anything that you haven't said, other than yeah, we expect it to be rainy, and it wasn't at all. It was absolutely lovely. We love both of those cities. Yeah. But again, Seattle, unfortunately, we were just kind of in and out of. But Portland, we got to spend a few days, which was always good. Right. And then California, and we spent a lot of time in California because yeah. we went the whole freaking length of that <laughs> state. I mean, there's no no way you can avoid it because we we went we crossed from the northern part, and then we ended up within. 
Well, we could see the Mexican border when we were in Arizona, Arizona but yeah. we were really close to the Mexican border because we were in San Diego. Uh, so we did almost the entire length of that state. It was it was pretty amazing. We had some great times there. California's so yeah. lovely. Yeah, we did that in a little part, bit. Yeah. We did so we did a mix of amazing Highway One, One Hundred One, and the Five. And and there are a couple of spots where the Five actually merges with um, with uh, the PCH down way down south, down towards uh, uh, San Diego. So yeah. Um, one of the things that we'd wanted to do, and this was, this was the portion of the trip where my bike trip from the summer, I biked from Portland, Oregon down to, uh, San Francisco. So there were a few places where I knew where we were going to cross over and we, we wanted to make sure we did it. So this sign is at about the one third point of a big freaking hill. And it was a lot easier to drive it than to bike it. But what was really amazing about it was that we got this amazing sunset. Yeah, look and at so the Kimberly's, Kimberly got to take basically pictures that look like this. And you can see the, the marine layer there. And that's uh, Crescent City, California, down below. Um, all so of those clouds. pretty. It was really amazing. And that was on our way out towards uh, the Avenue of the Giants and the California Redwoods. And Which is the best. This is probably one of the highlights of the yeah, trip, I think. Yeah, absolutely, by far. Yeah, this is called Burlington Campground right here. Anyone been to Avenue of the Giants? And Yeah. It's Lots of like car commercials are, are filmed on the Avenue of the yeah. Giants. You probably, you, you've seen it probably, in, at least in some point. But what's amazing about it is that you get views like this, and then you're able to do things like... Yoga amongst yeah, the trees. Yeah, it's a fallen sequoia. Yeah. Uh, this this one's a redwood. There's a, a redwood. I don't yeah. know the difference. There's two different types. Anyways, and then there's Kimberly biking along. We got to pull out the bikes again, and this was um, literally right along the route that I I did this summer. So it was a lot of fun to bike with Kimberly, and then eventually, Mr. Louie. <laughs> he decided he liked it, and it was so great. So I put a little. Um, cushion down for him and I biked her on the campground. I looked a little odd. But um, he was so happy. It was a re- That was literally one of my highlights because we've wanted for years to go biking with him and Tim tried and it didn't go failed. very well. It, it failed. I'll just say Massively. that. Massively. He likes to be up front and that's hard to do in a bike. So, uh, San Francisco. So let's talk about how hard it is to park in the city of San Francisco. <laughs> so I was stressing about this from the Day oh we left. Because I know how hard it is to park in this city, and I know what a nightmare it is to do it with like a freaking little compact car, right? So we burned through all of my great ideas, like every single one of my great ideas, the the the, the parking lot near Kizar Stadium, all these things. I'm just like, I don't know what we're gonna do. So we I I, I just point the car the, the, the camper up towards where we were going to have our event, and this was up in the hills above, sort of where Haight Ashbury area is, it's up up that direction. And all of a sudden, there's this enormous space, like two or three spots, and, right in front of the house. It, and it was so easy to get in park. And then we find out it was right in front. It was like, well, Tim, where is it from here? And then he checked his phone. He's like, Yeah, the blue dots here. on top of the red pin. I'm like, what? Like, what are the chances? We're like nuts. Amazing. So, and then the next day we had more parking car. About the day after that, I, I, I burnt all parking car in the city of San Francisco. I should never drive in that time again because all three instances we got a spot right around the corner from where we were having tea the next morning, and then we were dropping a, a friend of mine off because we went to Muir Woods. Here we are in Muir Woods. On the way back, we're dropping him off at his place, which is right on Alamo Square Park. Yeah, you're going to find lots of parking there, right? Boom, parking spot right in front of his place. It was crazy. So, But we got to go to Muir Witch, which is your, one of your favorites in this picture here. And just a little time check. I do. And that's where Louie got the red ball that you see in all the like upcoming photos. He stole it from that park. This was on the way. This was, I think, one of our favorite uh, oh, spots. Right. This was uh, near... Monterey. Monterey. It was something. Was it Monterey Dunes? Was that the name of it? Hmm. I think it was called Monterey Dunes. Something Dunes. And it was a nice little, just this cute little RV park. And, you know, they had these little fire uh, uh, circle, not fire circles, but fire, fire pits or whatever. Yeah. And so we so had nice. and really good wood and it burned really well. And yeah, it, was it smelled really cool. amazing. Yeah. It was almost, yeah. Yeah. It was really, it was, that was really a fantastic spot. And that was uh, back on the coast again. So, uh, Monterey was just amazing and of course Louis gets, there's the ball there's Louis with his ball and he was posing constantly and for those of you who put up with all the pictures of Louis at the beach I thank you because yeah. we just couldn't stop we were just like hey look it's another angle of Louis at the beach of course people want to see that he was so happy he really he did so he was happy. so content 
He really, and I do have to say, he, he, uh, that's a question we get a lot. He traveled so well. He really did. Um, this was the church where we did the uh, uh, event in Monterey, which was, you know, I just wanted to take a picture. Just You can see the marine layer there and the cool, like, uh, uh, Spanish tiling on the roof. It was just it was Beautiful. really a pretty place. Then we were on Highway 1. Okay, that's not terrible. I mean, these are the, just some of the views that you would get. You know, you could stop at any given point and see a, a shot like this where you're seeing these these tidal pools and just the Pacific Ocean, and it was just just amazing. You need to oh, talk about Henry Miller. Henry Miller. So th- so we 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 had we went to Big Sur. We, yeah. It was sort of our cho- we had a few choices on that day because we really had to get south and to an event. We were eating at a, this cool place near Big Sur with the best cinnamon roll we've ever. It was consumed. really ridiculously good at cinnamon roll. And Kimberly realizes, the Henry Miller Museum is somewhere near here. And I'm like, whoa, you're going to have to slow down. She said, the Henry Miller Museum is somewhere around here. So she's on her phone. It just came to me. And so here we were. And And it was like two miles from where we were in the direction we were going. And we would have passed by it and probably never saw it. Because that's 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 tiny. Yeah. That's it. And it was literally a religious experience. It was so amazing to be there. This place is... It was put together by a confidant and good friend of Henry Miller's. And so it was his former home, not Henry's, but, um, yeah, Henry, you know, we're like, like this. <laughs> You're tight. Um, yeah. And so, you know, it was just so sweet. And you walked in and there was like all these books and Anais Nin and all this really great new book I picked up by John Robbins, who wrote Diet for New America, who's just phenomenal. And, you know, I just was in heaven. And the clock was ticking. We had probably 20 minutes in there. But, um, you know, the Red Hot Chili Peppers have done concerts there. I mean, it's like so cool. My goal at some point, I'm putting this out there, is to do a writing workshop there. Like to host one. I think it'd be so much fun. I know Sark was going to do one maybe like eight years ago. And I remember being so interested. But there was a big mudslide. And I think so it got canceled. But, you know, it's just, it really, you just feel the artistic, like, energy in this place. Does everyone know Henry Miller? Kind of like, oh, my God, he's so amazing. He's dead, but <laughs> I still have a crush he's on no him. He's no longer with us. He's no, he's in our hearts. Um, this was crazy. Yeah, and so, again, just another shot of just what the Pacific Ocean looks like as it just kisses the <laughs> coast of California. Yeah, I, I know. know. That's what right? I was, I'm looking at these pictures going, oh, boy, yeah. We could do this again. It's crazy pretty. Yeah, it really was. You can see Lily's rims there, too, if you look close. Oh, yeah, close. if you look close. <laughs> see those silver see rims? The glare. Pretty great. Uh, Santa Barbara? Yeah, this was so much fun. Christine Mason Miller hosted us. And and I have to say, these brownies were so good. I had to just like honor them with this picture because they were really good. Brownies. And look at her cute little sign yeah. for them. There was lots of really cool stuff included. Oh, this. like how sweet the little welcome. Yeah. These are so these, thoughtful. just more examples of some of the touches. The hosts that we had were so across thoughtful. the board, super great. And, you know, I could spend an entire night just going through all the different cool things that they did for these events because they really they did a lot. We couldn't have done it without them. So. And it just shows, too, you know, how these little touches, like, just make such a difference to people. Because when I walked up, you know, clearly it's like where shoes go is right when you walk in the house. And I was like, I mean, what a thoughtful thing to do. Yeah. So thoughtful. And one other thing, which you don't have a photo of, but she put these little love notes, like, you are adored and things like that. And the teacups and all the teacups were turned over. So when you turn your teacup over, you'd have a little note in there. Again, like, so thoughtful. This was in Orange County. Uh, we stayed. So, when you stay in Southern California, may I recommend you stay kind of close to where you're going to be going because Los Angeles traffic is not, really terrible. Not easy. But we stayed in this place because it was really beautiful and it was really nice. But we drove, I think, 250 miles to do all of our LA events over the course of a couple of days just because it just, it's how it worked out. But. Yeah, but we got a sunset like this with the palm tree there. It was, it was kind of cool. Beautiful. Yeah. Newport. Newport Beach, California. That's right. That's where we were staying. So, And then in Los Angeles, we had a, this was uh, our L.A. event. And I just took a picture of this because I was just like, this is L.A. right here. You know, it's like these enormous cacti and this, you know, the beautiful sort of Western, you know, Spanish style tile uh, uh, on the roof. And it was just really, it was a really cool event as well. So pretty. Yeah. It was our first backyard that we did. And then mustache, pink mustache. Yeah. <laughs> Can you stand yeah, those? The little, it's the little things, right? 
By the way, they were freaking delicious. They were too. very good. They were good. I just ate across a, a North America. That's all I did. And then we uh, now this one, I, Minerva. This is Minerva the turkey, and oh, we she's went amazing. to the Los Angeles uh, Farm, Sanctuary. Farm Sanctuary, and then we were we were able to meet Minerva, and we uh, the studio adopted Minerva, didn't? Yeah, we, we did. That's right. And oh my God, to rub pig's belly, petting a pig. Oh my God, do you remember God. the name of this pig? No. And then more Louis at the beach. By the way, Louis wasn't allowed on this beach. We didn't know. A couple of cool fire department guys come, come roaring up on the beach. Hey guys, uh, yeah, no dogs are allowed here. And he was just like the super nicest, like laid back. Like, oh, okay, thanks, man. Sorry. It was and great. then as we're walking back, we see tons of signs. We're like, oh yeah, my we're God. Like, we are dumb. It. <laughs> like so dumb. We are just dumb. So yeah, that was Louis dropping the ball, by the way. I caught it mid-shot. Um... Joshua Tree. Joshua Tree National Park. Who's been to Joshua Tree? (gasps) Really? You're going to want to go after I show you a few of these shots. It's crazy beautiful. It's just one of those places where you just sit there and go, wow, this is... This, you feel like you're on another planet because just the, the, the flora and everything about it, it's, it's this high desert and it's gorgeous and it's just different. And we were really, really lucky to, to be able to go to a place like These this. These are the ones you like, the little the, teddy bear the, things. Yeah, I think I got a, oh yeah, I don't have a good, good, maybe I can zoom in on this. This is another good zoom in one. But uh, yeah, they were all fluffy. See that? <laughs> but they were sharp. So don't But they're prickly. Them. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we had a really nice time there. We were there overnight, and it was super cold because it was in the desert. Very cold. In most of the national parks, the, there's no plug-ins there, so you're kind of on your own from like a heating perspective. Yeah. At least that one. Yeah. But we, but we, we recorded a yoga video there, too, but there was so much wind yeah. that it was just... It was some, because what a crazy, gorgeous setting. Someday I may just put it out with no audio just because <laughs> yeah. it was so pretty, and we had a great backdrop, but yeah. unfortunately, like it was just... Like really loud. You can barely hear Kimberly. Yeah, but I'm like talking, oh, so like yeah. it's a little awkward. But yeah, it was just like kind of travel yoga, like you know, it's little things you can do, eagle arms and stuff like that. And great setting, but so we Maybe tried. We, well, we tried, and then we we said we were going to do it again. And then it was just, every time there was a whisper of wind, I was like, no, yeah. I don't want to waste our time. All right, so we... we uh, Arizona. Yeah, but the weird part about it was once we turned towards Joshua Tree, and I said it as soon as we did it, I'm like, we're starting back home, you know, because it was like we're turning east for the first time. And then, you know, once we started, it started to dawn on us, it's like, oh, yeah, well, this is, this is we went as far as we could. And that was, you know, 8,000, you know, seven, 8,000 miles at that point. And it just was sort of like, oh, weird. We're, yeah. We are, we're now... For the first time pointing back home. Because I think at this point, we only had maybe two weeks left. Yep, exactly. Well, yeah, we, we had sort of an accelerated second half. Yeah. We just sort of went through the rest, of, the rest of this. So we were in Phoenix, and we did a little event there at a bookstore so that fun. was going to become a yoga studio that was really cool. <laughs> yep. And I had to take the picture of the, the saguaro cactus because they're just cool. I mean, just the, there's just cool things in the desert. I, I don't think I could ever live in the desert, but I love visiting it because I just Yeah, and it was like life. 75 or 80, and they were like, it's so chilly. They thought, you know, it'd be like... Yeah, because the day before, it was 98. We, yeah, we really they're used to the out. heat. So they all had on like cardigans and stuff. It was, <laughs> it was pretty cute. Yeah. Uh, Sedona. Has anybody been to Sedona? Wow. So crazy, uh, right? Like so amazing. Yeah. This is on the outskirts of town and... It was just so, you know, that red rock and the blue sky. And it's just, you, you, it was really nice. And a lot of bike, we didn't get to bike here because we decided we wanted to go to the Grand Canyon. We're, cause we're like, oh, these rocks are small. We'd like large ones. Please. <laughs> so there we are, the Grand Canyon. And uh, this was one of my favorite places. And I just, what I loved most about it was the bikeability. Um, there's all these bike routes now. Yeah. If you haven't been to the Grand Canyon recently, um, you could see here. There's, there's. They, they had them based on your ability to handle hills and stuff like that. And it was a really, really cool and well organized um, system. And so we did about a, a ten mile round trip. Uh, just we just didn't have just a ton of time. Along the, the rim, it was so pretty. And you got to see things like you, you know that is a big drop off, like four feet behind us there. And you know this trail is just like you know you're right on the you're literally on the edge of the Grand Canyon and you know you got to see cool things and sit down on rocks and pretend to pose and be contemplative and stuff like that. <laughs> and then sure. this is my favorite one here. This that's I don't know if you can see it, but my uh, my bike tire that's a long way down right there. 
And uh, it just, it, it, it was, it, I, I had terrible vertigo, but I was like, I'm going to have to take this picture because this is so cool. But it was really cool. That was one of my, fa- I think that was one of my favorite parts of the trip. Was yeah, it's definitely able to a highlight. Bike with you on that, on there. And we had, we didn't have Louie with us because uh, we, we brought him out later and yeah. then took other pictures with him. But the bike trip was really fun. That was a lot of fun. Monument Valley. Have you guys seen Monument Valley? From the air. air. From the air. Oh, wow. That must be stunning. There were two parts about this that were amazing. First of all, I mean, just rolling up to... First of all, this was right before sunset, and I am just... Gunning, gunning really. it, trying I mean, to get there. We're, we're trying to beat the sunset to, to, to get pictures because that's sort of what we wanted to do. And we got these amazing, Isn't amazing that crazy? Pictures. It's like cotton candy. Yeah, it was so great. The other cool thing was on the way back, we ended up, we saw a place that was in town. I cannot remember the name of the town, but it was in, it's in Navajo, mm-hmm. uh, not the Navajo territory there. And, uh, I got what was called Navajo tacos, and it was um, fry Indian fried bread, and then there were beans and all sorts of other stuff. And I was just sitting there as we were eating that. I was going, you can't get this anyplace else. Oklahoma. Well, not like that. <laughs> not Navajo, at least. Have you guys had Indian fry bread? It's so it's, good. It, it's, yeah, it, uh, and it's difficult to explain. It's just this very light oh. and fluffy. And it's it, 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 it's a it's a staple of a lot of uh, the different tribes' diet, and it goes all the way into the Northwest as well. So it, it was just kind of cool to be able to partake in that little piece of just the culinary aspect of the region. And I, I re- that was one of my favorite nights. And it was this little yeah, tiny place, tiny it was cool. little place. There was Friday night, and the, so they were playing a high school football game on the radio in the corner. And it was just sort of it was very Americana right there. It was it was kind of cool. It's a whole lot of things all at once. The highest point on our entire trip was here at eighty five thousand or eight thousand five hundred seventy two feet. We went in. We got. We dipped up into Colorado and went to. Oh, no, I'm forgetting the name of it. Mesa Verde. Mesa Verde National Park. And we didn't have time to do go into the the, the old um, the cliff houses that go back like ten thousand years. So we didn't. We weren't able to do that. But we went up here to Park Point at the very high point here, and that was eighty five hundred feet. So this is the official high point of. Where we were, and it was snowing up there, so that's Louis pulling. I can't. I just yeah. thought that was a funny picture. New Mexico. This is this. These were the days where we were doing like nine hours a day. We we're like, okay, fast forward, New Mexico. Let's go to Taos. So we went into New Mexico, and it was just just a gorgeous place, and truly the land of enchantment in Taos, which we spent a couple days in. You didn't see Julia Roberts there. Does she live there? Mm-hmm. She lives in Taos. I didn't know that. Not at the bars we went to. Yeah. yeah. We went to this kind of like divey little place. It was called the Alley Cantina or something. We went like we two loved nights. It. And apparently there's a photo where like Clint Eastwood had dinner there in the film. Oh, Every Which Way But Loose. Every Which Way But Loose, yeah. Uh-huh. Do you guys remember the little monkey in Every yes. Which Way But Loose? He was in Rangatang. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Left yeah. turn, Clyde. Remember? Oh, he, he was, was in Rangatang. rangatang. Yeah. yeah, not a chimp. No, he's orangutan. I love orangutans yeah. are the best. Yay. So then we had another very long day that got us to Amarillo, Amarillo, Texas. We did an event there. So fun. And then the <laughs> sprawling metropolis of Fletcher, Oklahoma, the <laughs> largest city we visited on our tour, except for New York City, <laughs> Los Angeles, <laughs> Rochester, <laughs> Webster. <laughs> Yeah, that was fun, and we got to see Kimberly. This is this was Kimberly speaking at the event there, and we had a really nice showing, and it was it was really fun. It's and people fun. I've known since I was born, yeah. like a little infant, you know. So it was very very sweet. Yeah. And you see, there's the pumpkins. Yeah, we, yeah, the glitter pumpkins made it there. Yeah, it was it was just really nice. The other cool thing that we got this amazing owl. owl. This is in this is a, an excavated area where uh, Kimberly's parents are, are going to be building an addition to their home, and. This um, it right at dusk, this owl was there. It was just gorgeous, just gorgeous. Arkansas. So, Arkansas. Arkansas. We got. We went through Arkansas. Did we even spend a night there? I don't think I don't so. I did. Yeah, we just this went was through. Just working our way back, we, you know, we we really we our next event was in in North Carolina, so we really needed a push, and so but Arkansas is really pretty, so we took a picture of the sign. Most Johnny importantly, Cash. we stopped in Nashville for a couple of hours because we needed a little break, and we went to the Johnny Cash Museum. So fun! It just recently moved from where his, the town where his old lake house was that burnt down a few years ago, and now it's it's right off of Broadway in downtown Nashville. Totally recommend it. It's so cool. I mean, I'm a ridiculous Johnny Cash <laughs> fan, but um, 
I have a whole corner of my cabin that's like all Johnny Cash paraphernalia. I got some more stuff here. And it was just a lot of fun. Highly recommended. And then we went to uh, a honky tonk. Honky tonk central. Honky tonk central, right yeah. Way. And heard great a, music. Yeah, Saturday I got afternoon. wine in a glass like this, like, like a little plastic cup. Yeah, it was And a cool. veggie burger. I was like, this is amazing. Yeah. It was so fun. Nash- Nashville's cool. I, I think that's a, the only thing that I, if we could change, I would love to have spent a little more time. Oh, and there. then we went to that candy shop. We went to Hard a, Candy yeah. Christmas, I think was the name of it. It was like. Um, what is that stuff they eat there that's so good that we ate? Like, was it nougats or? There was nougat. There was caramel corn. I got caramel corn. I yeah, remember caramel that. corn. Yeah. Anyway, they good. were giving like samples as you walk in the door. I was like, I gotta have more. <laughs> she she like, just kept so going back. Amazing. She'd get to the end of the line. Get some <laughs> oh my more. gosh, yeah, that was a lot of fun. Uh, we did, went to Greensboro. Had an amazing time yeah, there. So really fun. cute town. Highly recommended. I didn't cute. get any good pictures there, unfortunately. As much as I liked the town, there was a great little bar there. That I got to see the Bills lose. You know the usual. <laughs> and uh, yeah, and then we went to Cape Hatteras, Outer Banks, which was amazing. And you know, just it, it, I I grew up going to the beach in Chincoteague, Virginia. And this reminded me a lot of that. If anybody's been to the, to the shore nearby here, but of course, you know, it's getting, getting close to winter and there was a real blustery stormy day. And this was one of them. And Louie was enjoying the beach for the last time. Cause we were like, dude, sorry, we're, we're done with <laughs> yeah, the beaches. After no this, beach so. in DC. But it was also really close to Kitty Hawk. And we went to see where the, first flights were which was actually kind of cool it's fascinating it was really we sat through the ranger talk and all that and yeah, got, they had so a cute. replica of this this like paper this it was like a paper plane i don't know how this, these guys didn't die it was it's amazing. so impressive it really yeah. is you know to hear the story and it was this. all bike parts they ran up they, they they sold bikes they had a bike shop that funded all of this and so they used bike parts to make this crazy plane that worked and then here we are going to the moon and back louis he lost his red ball in the ocean so I had to run back and get him another one. Yeah, this was his last, his last, last day. And he was, he was like he was holding onto the beach. He was like, I'm not going anyplace. But we ended up going to Richmond after that, and then came back home, and we had a great time, and really great time in Richmond. That was a really great way to end it all off. So but fun. I, I yeah, it's with um, one of the girls who've gone through our. Our advanced final. teacher training yeah. Kelly and um, so yeah it was at her studio so it was like so great yeah, it was really fun and then we had a few girls come down from the DC area for the yeah, event yeah that was a good group and we had we had a really nice time it was a really great way to sort of end it but it was so strange rolling into Virginia and starting to see Virginia plates I'm like huh what it was just bizarre and it was kind of surreal as we left Richmond which was Friday night and then we're heading to the cabin you know, it was like we neither one of us spoke. We both just like I just listened to music. I was watching like Kanye videos on my phone. I was just like we were in such a space, you know. And I, and I, I remember texting my mom and being like, "It's so sad. It's over." She's like, "You done good, kid." And that was just like what I needed to hear. And then it's like I was fine, you yeah. know. But it was like this really sad moment that ride from Richmond to the cabin. Yeah. But then you know, the next morning we get up. I unloaded and somebody Lily. overbooked us that weekend. A little overbooked. There was like Sleeping Beauty at the ballet. Oh, and so anyway, it was just like, and then as we drove back to DC, like it all felt good, you know, but it was just that moment of just, yeah. Oh, yeah when you're yeah. at the end of something big like this, it was, it was, it was sort of strange, but this, I mean, this gives you an idea of this map up there. That's what we did starting, you know, from the star there, there's DC, it worked our way up North and then looped down. And then it was just an amazing little adventure. And you can kind of see, the places where we sort of fast forwarded a little bit, but it was still I can't I can't tell you how great Kansas was and um, you know the ride across Arkansas and in, through Tennessee and everything that was all really pretty, even though it was sort of fast forwarded and there weren't a lot of events in those places. And it was sad, you know, that we had to miss the two kind of big states that are pretty deep, like Texas and Florida. So honestly, if we were to ever do this again, I would say we need six months. Two is just like two to do this route was insane. You know, it was a lot. It, we were constantly moving event to event, so it wasn't. We didn't have a ton of sort of enjoyment time in a lot of these places, and it would have been nice to have done that. So to I think see more of the yeah. The, so the, if yeah. we do it again, which I think we'll do something, Tranquility Tour is happening again. I just don't know how it's going to look. But yeah. yeah, yeah. I think it, it, it'll look different than this, but yeah, well, it will be fun. All right, so we got a, I think a minute left for questions. <laughs> yeah. Anyone have any questions or anything that you didn't get to ask while we were showing that you're curious about? Packing. Packing. Yeah, you know, it's, um, I definitely, believe it or not, I overpacked. And it was all layers. It was mainly, tra- it was pretty much all tranquility. And like I said, half of this bin was not even touched. 
So the funny thing is, and knowing tranquility, you may be aware of this, is like sometimes I wear the thing and then I sleep in it. So it's like my nightwear and then I'm wearing it the next day. And I did that quite a bit. And you know, you just add layers. So it was very light. The only thing was there's the different shoes that were needed. So one, there was one pair of shoes I did end up buying was rain boots um, that I... I thought as we were heading to the Northwest, I would need more, but they were really helpful with snow. And I just picked them up at like a really deep discount store. But um, that's one thing I didn't pack that I probably should have. So, you know, the funny thing is with shoes, you've got tennis shoes, uh, not tennis shoes, I don't wear tennis shoes, but you've got um, flip flops and like, you know, little like Puma kind of shoes. And then, um, you know, clogs, boots. That was the main thing. And then the uh, rain boots. So yeah, that's kind of the weird thing of just, you know, you pack for like 98 degrees to like 20 degrees, you know, it's hard to kind of think of that, but yeah. Did you have cats with you? In the- yeah. Well, that was the intention, uh-huh. right? So whenever we had this logo designed, when we did the announcement in April, I had two cats and mm-hmm. one was put down in July. He had cancer and he was the traveler. He's the one who like would have just been amazing on, on the road. Like he loves the camper. He did get into the camper quite a bit, but whenever we had him put down in July, the other one isn't really much of a traveler and he has a tendency to do inappropriate things outside the litter box. So we're like, let's get a sitter for him and leave him at home and he'll be happier. So that's why there's cats in the logo, but there weren't cats on the, yeah. And we did a trial run. We went out to Greensboro. <laughs> Greensboro has a beautiful Green Belt Green National Belt. Park. Yeah, just Amazing. And we did that one weekend. We were like, because like one kept escaping, you know. <laughs> like, yeah. We were like, maybe he'll stay away. <laughs> <laughs> so, Yeah. So sadly, no, but you can do it. I've seen people do it. And, you know, they build like spots for their litter box and everything. I ran into a guy on bike tour. He was biking with <gasps> yeah. his cat all around the country. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? Amazing. Yeah. He had a little trailer just for the cat. Cat would stay in the tent. And I, and then I told Kimberly, this was right after Bonard, Bonard went. And uh, so I was like, oh, Kimberly, here, here's pictures. This might cheer you up a little bit. She's like, does he have a litter box? Mm-hmm. And I said, my girlfriend wants to know. What about the litter box? The guy just sort of like gestures to the woods. Nature. So the this, cat this is outside, his litter box. I guess when yeah. he needs to use a loo, but isn't that the cutest? I mean, a guy pulled his cat on like, so. It was kind of crazy. Yeah, so cats can travel, but you know. E- even by bike. Even by bike. <laughs> Apparently. Yeah. Any other questions? Did you guys have any major like blowouts? Like how did you manage to get along? With it's so funny. You know, a few people have asked that and I've said we had two incidents, one at the very beginning and one at the end, and they were about tone. So the incidents. first one was like in the New York area and we had a little incident on the Metro and we had to have a little talk and it was your tone I wasn't happy with. And right. then in Nashville, right before Johnny Cash Museum, we had a little talk because he wasn't happy with my tone. But that was like it, believe it or not. And then we're living in this like insane spot, you know, like uh, it was literally like a hundred square feet. So think of what a third of this room, you know? So yeah, with like a dog and, you know, not showering sometimes for quite a few days and, you know, heating up water at uh, rest stops, you know? So you're just kind of like, if you can yeah. get through that. Yeah. yeah so is the beginning and end. And by the way, for the record, I was right on both instances. <laughs> Lisa, you had a question, honey? Yeah, I was just curious how many people were in the campgrounds. Oh, yeah. There were some that it was just us. And let's just put it this way. We brought down the median age about 40 years (laughs) to some for for some of these. Um, Met some really interesting folks, but there were were a lot of retirees in in there, especially just the time of year, too, because it was in the fall. But, you know, there there was one couple that... um, in New York, in Jersey, they traveled the country for her job. She had she had some kind of an insurance job, and they, she had to visit all of these different locations. And so they lived full time, full year in this camper. And it was one of those pimped out bus ones that was kind of crazy that like you know rock and roll people are in. And uh, yeah, it was it was kind of interesting to see different lifestyles that were out there. And uh, then there was us, and everybody thought. Our, 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 you know, our dinky little camper, you know, was a little, little bit of a conversation piece, but 
Yeah, for the most part, there wasn't one that was crowded. But I'll tell you, North Carolina, down in the Outer Banks, you could see the infrastructure that was there, and you could see how many people are there during high season. I was like, I don't want any part of these campgrounds when it's that crowded. You could see, and that's what was kind of fun about doing it during. And it was closing in like two days after we left the Outer Banks. Like the campgrounds were closed. It was like us and just a few people. So that's kind of nice, you know. So really, we were on the tail end of all the kind of tourist season, which is really great. Because there's a lot um, to ourselves, but then in places like Outer Banks, I mean, it was hard for us to find. There was one restaurant open in that area. So that's a little tricky. Yeah. So, yeah. But yeah, it was great. Definitely, if you're going to do something like this, do it in the fall or, or I guess like even spring, but yeah. summer, I can't imagine, you know, dealing with what people must so deal it, with. It, and- it's really a lot of those RV parks, it's very tight space. And, you know, I'm still sort of. A reluctant RVer in some ways. It's just this isn't real camping to me. It's di- it's a different type of thing. I'm used to hopping on my bike and having my tent and bringing all my stuff. You know, you think we didn't have a lot of stuff in the RV. I put it on my bike. So I was still I'm still sort of the reluctant RVer, but it was fun. It's I have so to say, fun. it's just a different way of doing it, and I learned a lot about how RVs work. That's for sure. <laughs> Any other questions? I have little treats for everyone for coming. But any other questions before I do that? Can we hear the music? So here comes the theme. Here comes the song. Yay! <laughs> Thank you.